It's a wonderful day in my neighborhood. This is uh, 20 floors up, overlooking Cebu City, Cebu, the Philippines. Uh, I sat outside and I recorded this video, but my mic was not working properly, and so I'm, uh, I'm back inside and I'm going to redo the voiceover for this one. The subject is real estate uh, around the Philippines. Uh, there's a lot more information for Manila metropolitan area than there is for Cebu City, Iloilo, Bacolod, and other cities here. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the factors. Uh, if you're interested in a little more of a deep dive on my membership site, uh, gosh, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, I put up a more detailed. I was able to find certain vacancy information for certain parts primarily in metro metropolitan manila manila area and got a little more in-depth discussion of the factors that are going to affect pricing and availability vacancy rates going forward anyway a lot of these taller condominiums that you see in in the video were not here four or five six years ago even a couple of years ago. Uh, so there are thousands, literally tens of thousands of more units that have, are coming online, have come online uh, in the last few years. Now, I think everybody knows that uh, March 2020, the Philippines, along with much of the world, uh, decided there was a crisis and they shut down they shut down international travel pretty much, locked everybody in their homes pretty much. And millions of people, as as the news came out, uh, millions of people left the Philippines. Millions of people who were occupying renting condominiums, uh, resorts, hotels. And uh, I just read an article uh, today or yesterday that, that said uh, the Philippines is is that here in September 2024 is at about 4 million foreign tourists so far this year. And uh, 2019, before the pandemic, pandemic, uh, they had about 19 million, I, I believe, foreign tourists. Uh, so long ways away from recovery. Now, most, most tourists, the, the majority of tourists come uh, in the... January, February, March, and also November, December, January, February, March. As it's the winter time in the Northern Hemisphere, people are taking vacation. They want to visit a uh, tropical paradise, which we certainly have here in the Philippines. So uh, one of the big factors uh, on real estate here in the Philippines is POGOs, Philippine Offshore Gaming operators. They're primarily Chinese companies who hire primarily Chinese, uh, but they've also uh, hired a lot of other a Asians as well to work. And uh, gambling is outlawed in China. Therefore, they set up their little shops, their online scammers here in the Philippines and uh, try to separate people from their money, whether they're legitimate or illegal. If they're, if they're registered, uh, they're legal. But anyway, in, I think July 2024, President Marcos Jr. stated that they are now outlawed and they all have to leave the Philippines uh, by the end of 2024. Uh, they, they've been involved in uh, too much negative press, uh, kidnappings, uh, love scams, um, gambling, prostitution, just a bunch of things. Uh, and uh, they've, they've been outlawed and they are, they take up, they take up huge amounts of office space as well as residential space. Um, and they are emptying those spaces. Uh, it had a major effect on uh, metropolitan Manila where they are concentrated. But also I'm aware of, of a number of places here in uh, Cebu City, Iloilo City, Bacolod, also, where they're getting up and leaving, they're they're leaving uh, large amounts of residential space, office space vacant, and that is going to affect the property values. And I've on on my membership site, I've gone in more in depth on that type of thing. If you're interested, 
overbuilding. Um, that is a discussion. When I first came here in 2015, August 2015, I met an architect who was a uh, manager of a, a building that I lived in, and I asked him, I said, are they, when I looked around and saw the new condominiums being built, are they overbuilding? Because I saw this happen in uh, Phoenix, Arizona in, in the early 80s when I moved down there. You buy a townhouse and get one for free. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but... Uh, and he said, that is a discussion that is going around. And that this was 2015, nine years ago. Um, since then, tens of thousands of new units have come online, new condominiums. Tens of thousands are coming online in the next year or two, I believe. And uh, at the same time, we're, we're still trying to recover from a pandemic, uh, the government lockdowns that happened in uh, March 20, uh, 2020. When governments around the world, including the Philippines, uh, shut down international travel in March 2020, millions of people left the Philippines. Uh, they vacated their condominiums, their hotel rooms, their resort rooms, and millions of people went back to their home countries. And I uh, read an article just the other day that said they're, they're presently, I think they calculated, 4 million foreign visitors to the Philippines so far uh, this year up to September, middle of September 2024. To, on 2019, 19 million for the year. Um, so a lot of the tourists come, come January, February, March, and then November, December. Um, so, you know, the end of the year, a lot of the people from the Northern Hemisphere as well as overseas Filipino workers come back to for the holidays to visit. Uh, but we're we're very far removed from the 19 million for sure. So long ways to recovery, put it that way. And with uh, tens of thousands of new units and uh, less less tourists, um, there's a lot of vacancies. From what I've read, uh, virtually all developers have stopped new projects, have either not initiated them or have uh, delayed them uh, and they th what i've read is that uh, there is a backlog of several years on the take up it's going to take several years to catch up and start taking this property up overseas philippine workers ofws who work overseas make a lot more money overseas than they can here in the philippines are huge contributors to the economy in fact average year and I think they're on a schedule to do that this year they they remit money back into the to their families into their bank accounts here uh, they invest money um, but over 30 billion US dollars not pesos US dollars per year it's a lot of money some of these larger real estate companies even send uh, sales agents off to uh, other parts of Asia, the Middle East, uh, the Americas, to entice OFWs uh, to invest in properties, pre-selling properties, other properties here in the Philippines. So um, they are taking up some of these properties. But as as uh, as I've stated, uh, you know, most of these developers they've they've got a many year worth supply of backlog that is not being taken up. And they have uh, either stopped or uh, delayed their ongoing projects. High end versus affordable. You know, if you've got money, um, the high end products, real estate products, seem to be doing okay. Trophy, uh, trophy properties. Uh, I got the money. This is where I want to live. These are the amenities I want. I'll spend the money. I've got the money to spend. And they're, they're not suffering so much. But it, it is uh, the, the properties below that, the uh, affordable range that apparently are not moving very well. And, and I get my information from a number of different sources. Uh, the big developers put out certain types of information. Uh, there's a certain amount of information you can buy online. There's... Uh, 
the bank, uh, the Central Bank of the Philippines, um, that puts out a certain amount of information and takes a lot of time to to dig through all this type of information, to read uh, the various articles about real estate, what what people are thinking and saying uh, out there, and uh, a lot of this is my opinion, but it's based on things that I've read over many, many, many months. Uh, so take it, take it for what it is. Do your own research as well. Thailand tax. Uh, what the heck does that have to do with the Philippines? Many of you will ask. And Thailand has apparently decided that uh, if you are a foreigner living in the Philippines and you live there more than 180 degree, 180 days per year or more, you become taxable. Your the income that you bring in to the Philipp to the to Thailand becomes taxable. It becomes a little more complicated than that, and I'm not going to get into those details. Let the lawyers and accountants get into that. But there are, if you read like Integrity Legal uh, Thailand, he's a lawyer. Uh, the other sites that discuss these. Um, there are a lot of people commenting that uh, they are no longer going to stay in, in Thailand more than 179 days a year. So they will be, some of the thousands of those people will be coming to the Philippines or Vietnam or Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Central America, South America. They will, they will split their time up and they will take up some of this property, but they're there seems to be a huge surplus of properties and vacancies at the present time. The, as I walk around uh, and, and notice the lack of lights on in a lot of units, even even where I live, I've lived for three years now, a um, huge number of, of units that uh, are vacant. Uh, some are owned, but nobody's living in them. Um, Anyway, there is there is competition out there. If if that's important to you in finding a decent place for a reasonable price, location, location, location. Um, you know there there are a lot of companies, a lot of people with the uh, big vacancy rates. Uh, you know this information primarily in the metropolitan Manila area, but I'm sure it's happening in other cities as well. They're looking for deals. They're 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 chasing deals. They're lower cost office spaces, better amenities, uh, better spaces uh, near better amenities and transportation for less money. Office spaces, residential spaces, and uh, I I talked to a real estate agent here a while back that has has quite a number of. Uh, you know, most my experience, most real estate agents have one, two, three, four, maybe five or six properties that they manage, and that's about it. Uh, this this guy had uh, I don't know 25, 30 different properties, different parts of the Cebu City metropolitan area, and he was telling me, you know, IT Park seems to be holding its own, but all the other areas where he has properties, really slow, really slow to get get the rentals. Uh, going so just depends you know timing timing depends uh, location and demand and he has he has some short-term rentals as well as longer-term rentals so he's got kind of a, a mix there as well pre-selling versus high dollar you know if uh, it, it helps if you're if you're going to be a renter or a buyer uh, to understand when when the person you're dealing with bought the property. Now the person who the person I'm renting from bought pre-selling many many years ago. So their cost their 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 return on investment need doesn't have to be nearly as high to make a reasonable return on investment. If you buy a property at the high end, obviously you need more money, rental income, or if you're going to resell it, you need you need a higher price to get some kind of return on your investment. Um, so it's good to know as you're talking to people when, how long have you owned the property? When did you buy in? And you can find, you know, there like I said, there are a lot of vacancies uh, depending upon how important that that final deal is you know I've got a, a friend down the hallway he bought a condominium years ago 
and I'll, right away up front he offered I'm, I'll, I'll pay all the closing costs I'll pay all the ta you know and he didn't have to do that but it was so much less than what he was used to back in the UK that uh, that he did he, he had the cash and it's you know he, he, he spent a lot more money than he had to and one way to look at things is is uh, on on the cost and and what it, how they compare to other properties is the cost per square meter and everything is metric here in the Philippines so uh, figure out the cost per square meter to buy or rent and it gives you an idea whether you're getting a reasonably good deal or possibly there's room to negotiate there again if the person bought in high uh, they're going to require unless they're motivated unless they don't really need the money they just want to unload the property uh, either rental or or to sell it I ran into a guy uh, I think the second year I was here and he had bought two studio units in a building and he was uh, I think for like one point 1.5 million each so 3 million for two units he put the two studio units together made a door in between and he was willing to sell those two units for what one cost about 1.5 he just he, he was done with the Philippines for whatever reason he wanted to go back to the USA and I knew enough about that particular building I did not I was not in, interested in, in, in investing but it probably would have been a reasonably good investment probably could have uh, turned it around in a few years and made a few bucks before 20 if you did it before 2019 2020 when they locked down the countries how much room is there to negotiate on these properties really depends upon the property really depends upon the time it depends upon the particular person um, there, there are a lot of people with money who have own properties and they're willing to hold on to it forever in a day or just pass it on to to their family members if they can't sell it for the price that they want and and uh, a nice markup at the same time uh, on the other hand there are people who are motivated they they just want to get out from under their property and if you want to take the time to find those people they they bought in at a low price pre-selling perhaps um, they've got other issues with their family, whatever that might be, medical issues. They, they want to buy other property some other place. Uh, they want to get out from under it, get the cash, and go on with their lives. Um, you know, it takes time. You might find those people right away. Um, I've walked away from many, many rentals, uh, many rentals that I, 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 I would consider there was something something that I didn't like about the property or I didn't feel comfortable with uh, with the owner of the property with the agent something I, 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 I just felt uncomfortable with and I walked away uh, my, my present land Lord uh, landlady um, we, we work well together I, I pay for a lot of little things I probably wouldn't have little repairs and uh, last time our lease came up i said yeah we'll we'll stay here another year if you keep the the rate at the same thing it was and it i think before the pandemic it was thirty five thousand. now it's twenty five thousand. has been that way she hasn't raised it you know, i pay for little things i pay for the ac cleaning for little repairs and i, I don't bother her uh, she has a job she has a couple other at least two other units and she's yeah people people call me and they think I'm supposed to leave work and come and fix the the toilet if it's not working properly or send a repairman right away and uh, so she's happy with us we're happy with her um, you know I I read a lot of stories on social media people not getting their their deposits back and having issues the landlords don't want to fix certain things and take care of certain things and uh you know it it, it life is a risk and you you go out there and you just do the best that you can and uh about leases i've been i've been saying that i'm going to do a video about leases soon i will uh, probably put that up on my membership 
the site initially about leases and some of the issues that you might be aware of and uh, other issues about uh, refunds different laws regarding getting your refund back a number of different things that I have I've researched uh, anyway you know the Philippines has has a lot to offer uh, doesn't mean that you aren't going to have challenges along the way you aren't going to meet people that uh, you, you don't have a good relationship with whether they're landlords or uh, other people here in the Philippines. I, I have been very, very fortunate in, in meeting a lot of really, really great Filipinos and having uh, good luck. I've rented from two different, uh, let's see, two different, uh, six different condominiums, uh, two different guys, Australian, Australian guys, as well as uh, three Filipinos. And I haven't had any issues with with getting my deposits back, and I've had a good relationship with each and every one of them. But I know there's there's lots of information online on the various expat uh, groups and forums about some people not not having a very good experience with getting their uh, getting their deposits back, and especially getting them back in a timely manner. And there are uh, there are some legal recourses in that way. We'll talk about that in another video. Anyway, looking forward to your comments. Thanks for coming along. Stay safe. Safe travels. See ya.